the sisters united. Uh, listen, we're going to start this show off with a little bit of uh, his poem. Just to, you know, just to be in the mood for some girl talk. So let's see what we got. His poem, she got a lot of wonderful pieces. Let's listen to the breakdown. How about that? Right here on the United. We stand united for one God, yet divided by ourselves. Wondering why people won't come in completely. They see us broken, breaking each other. She did, he did, they did. Church hurt me. And the others standing outside looking through stained glass windows. They stand aching to come in, yet afraid because of how perfect we look. (laughs) We ain't perfect. We look good being imperfect. As we slug others on the inside, blazing their imperfection while failing to identify our own. Hey, I'm guilty. I could say thank you, Jesus, over and over again for forgiveness for forfeiting the unfortunate choices of one I call my church family while they outside look on the inside through stained glass windows. Nearly dying from outside hurt while church huts kills us on the inside. They desire to enter, but they stay looking through stained glass windows to what safety appears to be love. Hopefully agape, yet Philo raises his hands, many times screaming, Notice me, yes, I love you. (laughs) It's nice, cute, and necessary. For if I say sister or brother, then I must love you as such. Eros is there too, waiting for marriage or affair. Yeah, I said it. It's real in the church. Storage love, like mama, daddy, uncle, auntie love. That's there too, but hopefully agape stands at attention. The highest love, his love, in fact. If we truly had this love, there would be no negative impact. Love breeds love. Iron sharpens iron. (laughs) And we many times use neither and end up spiritually killing each other and them, the outsiders, looking for something real, wanting, needing something real. But so many times it's just the world all packaged up real pretty just looking like church. But offering the same rejection and it's called church hurt. Hurting hurt people, preparing them to hurt others. You remember your first time? I'm speaking to my church folk. The first time you church hurt someone or got church hurt. It hurts, don't it? Guilt on one side, betrayal on the other. Now we caught up on us and we can't even go get them standing on the outside. Hurting from the world. So they look through the stained glass windows, aching to grab what appears to be agape storage, like Philo or even Eros love, when inside too many churches have none of the above. There's only brokenness of church hurt, covered in smiles, fake hugs, and Judas kisses. And when reality hits us, that hurt church folk, hurt church folk, out looks better than in. And some inside join them on the outside looking through the stained glass windows and they ask their newfound company, hey, what happened in there? And they said, too much hurt inside. (laughs) At least I know what to expect out here with you. And the outsider said, my God, what type of love is this? Welcome back, welcome back. This is Sisters United. And that was his poet. We had her on the show about a year ago. Please go back into the archives and check her show out. We have a host on the line. Who we got on the line today? Good morning. This is Keisha Roberson. All right, I got Keisha on the line. 
Mm-hmm. What, what's your name? I said, how y'all doing out there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I know I'm doing good, and I'm hoping that our listeners are doing good as well. How's everything going? Oh, uh, pretty good. Finally got this move together. I have boxes everywhere. Trying to get get just get things together, but all is good. All is well. I know that's right. Well, we definitely want to uh, just uh, take a moment of time to just, you know, give God praise that we're all still healthy and doing well and uh, just believing God to do some mighty things in everybody's life. Listen, I, I'm going to tell y'all something. I love uh, spreading the gospel and saying what I say in the name of Jesus. But I believe God can work out some awesome miracles in your life. Now, what I want to do today is I want to get into uh, a topic, okay? And uh, as I shared on my on my uh, lives before, topic I want to talk about is uh, relationships. When you find out people in your relationship is not who you thought they were, or you and you are forced mm-hmm. to have a conversation, or you find out they're not where you are in the relationship. And this happens a lot of times in friendships uh, as well as when you're dating. You'll think that you are in something, you know, deep and meaningful and the other person is not. You know, having a tough conversation, uh, communication to me is a big, big part of this. So I definitely want to... uh, Definitely want to see what everybody thinks of this topic. So what we're going to do while everybody joins us on the line, we're going to go ahead and play a song by, let's see. Let's play so, uh, See Heaven. <laughs> by Jay Speak right here on the Stay on here. 
where the streets are paved with gold. No more death crime, growing old. Jesus has a mansion up there waiting on me. Oh, what a day it will be when we can all go see heaven. Yes. What a day yes. it will be. All right. Now, so again, back to our topic. Keisha, are you there? I am. I think um, everybody else is having problems getting on. <coughs> it's dropping them. Oh, oh they're having problems getting on? Yes. You, um, you had a problem getting on, too? I didn't, I don't know what happened. My um, I, I mean, I'm not having problems now. It hung up or something. I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I hope they get on. Amen. <laughs> I hope they do. Because this is a good topic to talk about today. You know, in any relationship that you are in, it is important to know, like they say, the status of what you are, who, what you are to that person. Because like I say, it's a lot of one-sided relationships. How do you feel about this topic, Keisha? I'll let you go ahead and talk. I mean, that's absolutely the truth, but one thing that I always say is people will only do to you what you allow. So e- even if it's a person that's, um, you know, known as a dogged person or, you know, getting over type person scheming, if you call them out on it and you choose to deal with that person, but you call them out on it either, they are not going to do it to you because you're not playing like it's not happening or yeah. they're going to move around. So, exactly. um, you know, but, but there's a lot of one-sided, um, you know, extreme one-sided relationships. I mean, people talk about the 50-50 thing that ain't happening. It's not, you know, it's not a 50-50 situation, you know, in most relationships. Sometimes you have to dig deep, but if you um, realize that all of the time, you're the one with the extra. You're the one doing the 60, the 75, the 80, and that other person, you know, is consistently doing, you know, making up the other piece. That might be something you want to reconsider. Or, in, or at least in your own self, realize what it is and decide if that's something you're going to, you know, that you want to deal with for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We have uh we have uh, Tammy Lily on the line. Uh, okay, Tammy, Tammy got on. Hey, hey, I'm right here. How are y'all doing? Today? All right. Pretty good. We're doing good. We're doing good. How are you? Uh, on this topic, we're talking about knowing who you. I guess you say who you are to somebody. You know, just like uh, for example, let me use for example dating. A lot of times in dating, people don't communicate and get an understanding of where they are because and then they end up thinking they're in a uh you know, they're in a relationship with somebody, that person uh say, I never told you that. Because I went through an experience like that. Even in friendships it's important, I believe, to have a clear understanding of where a person is with you because you will I think it's a setup for disappointment a lot of times, you know? So how do you feel about that? I think it's imperative to know where you stand with anybody, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a romantic relationship, or platonic relationship, whatever the nature of the relationship, I think both parties should know where they stand because then you could be ruining a, 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 actually a pretty good relationship because one person is wanting to have um, a closer, more intimate relationship, and the other one is scared to have that intimate relationship or that closer relationship. But they want it, but they don't. They they pull back because they don't know where they stand in your life. So those the, those are some hard conversations to have. That's not the romantic side of having a conversation. You think a person automatically know where well, they should know where I stand because I do this, this, that, and the other. No. It, 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 when you assume, um, my mother always told me, when you assume, you make an ASS of yourself. So let's not make ASS of ourselves. Let's go ahead and know instead of assuming what the nature of the relationship is. And it just it helps with um, confidence 
in a relationship. You know, him put you know, self confidence of that person. You know, when you're walking around here thinking you're one thing and you're really something else, it does something to your 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 self esteem. So I think it's important, you know, on both sides. You know, if you're confused about it, something and you think it is more than what it is, I think you should know. If they don't think it's more than what it is than what you think it is, then you got some decisions to make. In regards to that relationship, are you going to stay in that relationship or are you going to walk away? Exactly. I, I okay. agree with that. Yeah, because, I mean, I find a lot of people that, that are so broken hearted, so, you know, uh, traumatized by this situation, you know, because they put so much time and effort in, but I always find out that they, did, they didn't communicate. They didn't have a conversation. And especially when it comes to friendship, we we do this a lot. You know, you'll grab a hold of somebody, and you'll just be in a you'll be in a relationship with them. But but they are their mind is somewhere else. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You are free, you are considering them your friend, but they are considering you an acquaintance. You get what I'm saying? We have uh, another uh, host on the line. Go ahead and talk to us. Hey. Good morning. Hey. Are you Rita? Is that Rita? Huh? Yeah. Rita. All right, Rita. What do you think about this topic? Um, <laughs> I think in a relationship, uh, basically I think it's what both parties put in. Um, I don't think it should be a one-sided thing, and that's also in friendship. I'm not very like on friendship or relationships um, because they kind of one and the same, really, to an extent. Uh, however, I think mm-hmm. that most people, uh, sometimes relationships are one side when there's no communication. And I think mm-hmm. once both parties can let each other know where each other stand, because I'm a very mm-hmm. um, person about I need, I need clarity. And if there's no clarity, it's like, okay, then where do we stand? So, um, I think there should be – I think one side of relationships don't work. <laughs> Just put it like that. Because you have one putting in and the other yeah. not putting in, like one person giving more than the other. So um, I think it's very clear in a relationship or in a friendship to understand where you stand with a person so that you can move forward. Communication is a key in relationships and friendships. That's just kind of how I see it. That one yeah, side, of the side of the relationship works perfectly for the person that's not giving. And when you start doing what it is that you're doing for them, then it, it a lot of the times it turns to, well, I didn't ask you to do that. And I think, exactly. that's, the most, uh, I think that's the most ungrateful thing that a um, person can say, can say to another person because the bottom line is I consider you. You know, um, I look. You know, I look out for you or whatever, and things like that. No, you don't owe me anything because I look out for you. But uh, you know, grateful. I, I am. I am really big on being grateful. You know, for things or whatever, because people don't have to fool with you, and that's the bottom line or whatever. So, even if it's something as small as a cup of water, I'm being yeah. offered to me because I step in your house or. You know, whatever. I have a really good friend. Um, um, I call her my my sister, um, Jaconda. She lives in um California, and oh my goodness, she, you know, just sometimes or whatever, she'll text me. You know, sissy, check. You know, check your PayPal. You know, sissy, check. You know, whatever. And you know, she's a very loving, giving person. I'm the same way. So, and I think that that's so cool because she's so far away, you know, whatever. But, we, you know, she's my friend. You know, we're really good friends and we do things or whatever. I mean, I've been in situations with people, you know, friendship. I call them all ship. Uh, it's ship. So, you know, with, you know, a dude will be in a relationship with her. And, you know, just because I'm a, you know, I'm a very loving and giving person, but I do it because I want to do it. I don't do it because you know, like to keep a person or to, you know, make you be my friend or nothing like that. That's not what I do. But if you are my friend, 
you know, I'm around and you have, you know, and you lack in something and I can do it, you don't have to ask me to do things for you, you know. It's just something I'm going to do. So, yeah, you know, you have to kind of watch yourself or whatever. A lot of times we put ourselves in situations where we feel you, you know, and things like that. But, you know, yeah, the person didn't ask you to do it, but, you know, sometimes you have to remove yourself from just being so loving and giving or whatever when people are not being, um, you know, grateful. I can't stand an ungrateful person. A card, thank you, or, you know, just surprise them with something, yeah. you know? I agree. You know, and I think sometimes people, uh, while you were talking, I was thinking about how some people don't know how to be friends. Some people don't know how to, how to uh, or what a friendship takes because they really um, have a bad track, track record on being friends, you know, on, uh, uh, for example, if your friend comes and tells you a harsh truth about, <laughs> you know, a situation in your life, and before you know it, you don't want to deal with them no more because you, you mad because they had the nerve to, t- you know, but a real friend will tell you the truth, you know, so I, 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 I do you find, do, do y'all, uh, how do y'all feel about that, you know, do you, that some people need to learn how to be a friend? Or what a friend is, you know. If nobody's speaking up, I can talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times, I think in that situation, you have to learn and understand to be real with yourself. You know what I'm saying, or whatever. It is yeah. nothing that anybody can tell me about attraction that will be a revelation. You know, I know my ups, my downs. I'm very you know, straightforward, cool or whatever. I'm not, and I'm working like some things I'm working on. Like I will talk over somebody, you know, whatever. But it's not on purpose to me. It's the oldest thought is in my mind. Let me get it out. Thing. So I'm working on that. You know, I know that that is a, a flaw that I have. You know, so I'm not never being disrespectful when I do it. It's just one of those things. But you have to be real with yourself to start that before you yeah. can um, understand the realness and a friend telling you about yourself, you know, or whatever. I mean, even yeah. the things or whatever. My owner always tells me, you have too much stuff. You, you just have too much stuff, you know, or whatever. I know I have a lot of stuff. I love clothes, you know, or whatever. And it's hard for me to get rid of clothes to get more clothes, you know, or whatever, when I get more clothes. That's something I'm working on. You know, that's something that, you know, I know I have a lot of, clothes. I know I have a lot of stuff, you know, or whatever, but that's something that I'm working on. But, you know, when it's said to me, I'm not just thrown, you know, thrown back like, hey, I can't believe they said that to me. No, I know. You know, I know. So you have to be real with yourself and then the things that other people tell you about you that are true, you don't feel offended. So just yeah. hate and they're going to they gonna hate or whatever. You have to let them do their job. <laughs> you know, you have to let them do their job. Yeah. That's yeah, I, I understand that. Oh, I like Rita's comment. What Rita say? Rita, yeah. I'm gonna share I'm gonna share your comment. Narcissists are people to be one sided relationships. It's all what they can get from you. Those relationships never work. <laughs> That's the truth. That's true. That is indeed the truth. They never yeah, I was, um, they, because I, I would tell people, uh, people tell me about uh, they've been in those type of relationships, and normally those type of relationships are one sided because it's all what the person can get from you versus what they can bring into the relationship. And um, in the beginning, it seems as though, you know, they for you, but then eventually, as you go along, you find out they're not, and it's most of what they can get from uh, from you in the relationship. So normally, those relationships are one sided, and they all and they never normally they never work out, or the person gets stuck in the situation and they don't know how to get out the situation. Um, so yeah. I think it's very clear on, um, I guess understanding, and I guess. 
um, evaluating a person just to see if they, because not all the time people show their true colors in the beginning. And um, yeah, yeah. So, and to answer the other part, uh, for me personally, um, I would, you know, real friends or relationships. Um, tell me the truth. <laughs> I mean, because I feel like mm-hmm. if a person loves you, or are they really concerned about you, they would tell you the truth. Because I rather not you lie to me. I rather you tell me uh, the truth. Because you, you have me out here looking crazy. And as a friend, I, I mean, for somebody that I consider a friend, I would say, "Hey, Larita, you need to blah blah blah." Versus me having to, you know, having me out there looking crazy. And I just think real friends or um, people that you consider a friend will tell you the truth. And because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of straightforward like that. I'm like, look. And it don't be no harm. It's just the fact that if I see something out of concern and care, I will be, you know, um, some kind of way figure out how to relate that to the person if it's a uh, somebody I really care about or uh, consider a friend. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, right. And that's why. That's why I say I think a lot of people need to they can't recognize friendship. And I do want to uh, speak on that, like you said, the, the one-sided relationship a person. Uh, uh, for example, I explained to somebody, somebody was saying what all uh, a person does for them, right? They were like, oh, let's, uh, well, let's get into a relationship, right? Uh, between a man and a woman. Oh, he buys me this. Oh, he buys me that. Oh, he takes me here. He takes me there. He takes good care of me, right? And then, uh, but he's always bragging about how good of a husband he is, right? <laughs> a good of a, you know, I'm all this in a bag of chips. I'm this, that, and the other. And uh, so one day he was like, well, he he's selfish. And, and people couldn't understand why she would say that he was selfish. Well, a lot of the things that he was doing he for her was to make him look good. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of the things okay. that he was doing was to, was to make him look good. It was to make him, and she didn't realize it because he was always, you know, getting her gifts. He was always, but he was always bragging on himself <laughs> and what he was able to do. And she didn't realize that that he, I don't know if it's like narcissism, but it's more, it was more of everything I do is to prove that I am who I am. It never was about her, right? And some people say, well, how do you figure that? Because selfish people will take care of other people because they're concerned about how they look. But when they get behind closed doors, they're a totally different person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When they get behind, listen, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I experienced this firsthand because a person, they'll get in public. They are the nicest person in public. You know, open doors, all kinds of stuff. Take you to the finest restaurants, all this stuff. But behind closed doors, you are crying and miserable and all these different things. Because they... That it's that I can't explain it, but do y'all get what I'm, what I'm saying? They're not doing it really for that person. They're doing it for themselves, you know. And they say, well, they spending their money. They doing this and they must love. They no, no, no. <laughs> so even in that, understand what's really happening, you know. So that you don't be deceived, like I said. So you don't be disappointed later. You know, because you'll find that person will turn around and say something like, um, they'll turn around and they'll say something like, look at what I did for you. You see this? You see this house? I could I could be somewhere else. I could be doing this over here. But look what I've done for you. Now, they're going to say that in private, okay? But in public, they are, man, yeah, I just took my lady over and got my lady this and 
Man, and, and, and sometimes it happens with women too. When the women, is, when a woman is the one that that is buying the gifts or doing the most around the house and doing just enough to save, I used to tell people some people do just enough to save that they are good, or they'll do just enough to say they're a good husband. They'll do, they'll they'll put on the facade in front of people. That's why I say, you know, you have to really, really have conversation. It's a conversation. And what and, and and you paying attention because you'll waste five and six years in a relationship when you could have been free and actually allowing space for the for the right person to come along, you know. And like I say, that's in that's in uh, a man and a woman or or friendships and all that. That sometimes you have people in your life that's taking up space, and it doesn't. So I feel like. That's just me. I'm just saying. I feel like you should even be careful in that. You know, when a person is substituting material things for the emotional part or the connection or the, you know what I'm saying? It, it, you're in a dangerous, you may be in a dangerous spot as far as your emotions and, and being set up to be disappointed. Yeah. I also think that sometimes something that somebody was talking to me said the other day, you also got to understand and know people love language because some people love language are materialistic. Um, um, once you understand, because I, I was talking to recently about a situation and I realized that the person's love language uh, in any type of relationship, you have to understand what it is that they gravitate to. Some people love languages materialistic. So if you buy them something, they mean you love me. And what they'll do is what I realize they'll do the same thing to other people. And I might not receive it because that may not be my love language. Like you get, you buy me stuff, but I'm, my love language is not materialistic. My love language may be more sentimental. Um, it's like if you touch me, that means you love me or, you, you know, whatever it is that, my love language is so it's not going to respond to um, the materialistic, but if the, if the next person don't understand what your love language is because their love language is materialistic, you buy me something, you bring me something or whatever, that means you love me, you give me money, that means you love me. And so what they'll do is return and give that to the next person because they don't understand. They're thinking, okay, this is my love language. I feel like this. Maybe that's the same way the other person uh, feel and that may not be the case so I think in a relationship any type of relationship friendship all of that because um, you know there's different types of relationship you have to understand what the next person um, receives what what is it that makes them feel concerned what is it that makes them feel cared about because you buy me something, I'm gonna just if I'm not materialistic, I'm just gonna throw it in the corner and be like, mm, thank you. But that doesn't make me feel loved. So I yeah. think there um yeah. and even on the one side of relationships or in a relationship you have to be able to communicate that and being able to understand that on both sides because otherwise it will be seem like it's one sided because technically they feel like they showing you love because that's the way they receive love. And so that gave me an eye opener, and I was like, hmm, yeah, didn't think of it like that, but yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Anybody else want to say something on it? I was going to say, um, to kind of talk about, like, from, you know, what Rita was saying, that's why it's so important. I don't know, I'm a, I'm a communicator, so we, let's talk about this. You know, and I ask, what, what do you call love, you know? What do you consider love? What do you consider, you know, like, and I've even said, you know what, Rita talked about our love language. I think that is so important. I think that is so important because, you know, I might be, like in an abusive situation, you know what I'm saying? A person might feel love when it's always turmoil and y'all fighting, you know, because that's just something that they're used to. You know, so it's so important yeah. to um, have me to understand your love or your decision yeah. that's going on because I said, I a minute, this one, he ain't working for me. You know, this don't work. So I need to understand when you do X, Y, and Z, 
are you considering that love, or what do you consider love? I can understand. Mm. Yeah. So, and I, I like that. Yeah, I, like, I, I think this is going to be my hashtag. I like, you know, I'm one of those type of people. I like the story behind the story. Um, and we talked about love language, and a lot of that love language has a lot to do with how you was raised, what you see in the household. My mother showed me love by doing this, that, that, and other. My father showed me love by doing this, that, and other. So a lot of that stems about just from um, that, because you know, people think, okay, um, that's my parent, that's my mother, so she automatically. Love me. I know she was showing me love, and you know you can't, they don't know how to find a balance in you know uh, motherly love versus friendship love versus um you know this is my man's love or this is my woman's love. You know each relationship is different, so the way that I show a person's love is going to be different based upon what type of relationship that I'm in, and it also it just goes back to you know the backstory of who you are. relationship with his mother. You need to see if he have an unhealthy relationship with his mother. 
You know, you need to see if how he how he treats women. Why did the last you break up with the last person? You get what I'm saying? Those are questions that I feel you should ask. You know, I ask all kinds of questions. You know, because I want to yeah. know. You know, and 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 I feel like this. It's my life too. You know, I don't feel like answering exactly. that. And that that ain't none of your business. Well, guess what? I ain't none of your business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna set me up for no madness. You get what I'm saying? So <laughs> I think being bold, asking the asking questions, getting around family members, especially when it comes to a relationship, you are talking about sharing your life with a person. Get around their right. relatives, uh, find out what it is they experience. That's why I really, really agree with you, Tammy, you know, because we avoid that. I don't want to meet his mama. You know, I don't want to meet his his uh, uh, baby mama. That's why we like to call each other baby mama. I hate that term, but I don't want to be around his, his her, and, 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 and she ain't none of my business, but she is. So she, eventually, she's going to be your business. You need to know how she functions. And how what their relationship looks like. You need to know. You need to know all of this. You need to know if he if he is uh if he want a whole bunch of kids. You <laughs> you you through having them. You get what I'm saying. All of these things you need to know before you invest emotionally into a person. That's that's my take on it. I agree with that. You have to know. And ask the questions. Don't be scared of the answers. Because a lot of times we want to hear what we want to hear. And, and not what the real deal is. You know, whatever. So, you know, you ask that question, you be ready for that answer. You know, whatever it is. And um, I don't care how fine that brother is because I had I love Biggie. Okay, you give me a six. If I could make me one, he'd be black as night, six four to six eight. 
like me, I'm at a point in my life where I'm pursuing goals. Uh, my kids are grown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I had to sit down and have a conversation with my husband and say, hey, listen, I had to, you said, have to get up at 630 and, and get the kids stuff ready. You know, we had to actually sit down and say how our household would be because there are no kids. So it's a whole nother area. You know what I'm saying? So you wouldn't get with somebody, say you don't want to cook no more. You wouldn't get with somebody that required that, that one of their requirements or what they're looking for is somebody that cooks <laughs> every day. You know what I'm saying? And then you in turmoil because you said, I'll cook every day. Now you, you it's been a year and you sick of it, you know, and now you finna, it starts, um, a whole lot of unnecessary stuff within the relationship when you, if you would have, that's why I say earlier, when you find out who somebody is or what they want, you have to meet them right there. You can't just be expecting it to change later. If they tell you, right. this is who I am. I don't deal with this. I do this. This is how, like, like we say, this is how I love. This is how I show my love. If that's not what you ask God for, but that's not what you need, you get what I'm saying? You have to be willing to say, okay. <laughs> you know, or like they say, deal breaker. Mm-hmm. Right. I think a lot of people's issues are because they do settle uh, for relationships uh, because I've been waiting for so long, blah, 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 whatever the issue is. I think people... Um, Settle for for just a relationship. A lot of people, they're going to just say some people, because I see it all the time, but a lot of people just settle for a relationship just to say, hey, I got me a man, a piece of a man, or I got me a piece of a woman. But technically, behind closed doors, y'all look cute in front of everybody. Y'all dressing alike, doing the thing or whatever, and behind closed doors, it's not even half of what you was expecting or that you um, – praying for or whatever, but a lot of people uh, settle for relationships because they don't want to be single or they don't want to be alone, which is an issue. You have to definitely find somebody that is compatible for you. Like you were saying about uh, you and your husband have a conversation about, look, I've been cooking all these years. My kid is grown. I I just don't want to do that anymore. So if you're looking for that, I'm not the one. I mean, we have to be genuine. We have to be authentic with the person. And you you don't find it uh, very often these days um, because, you know, people just want to get you with they, this famous word right now, entangled. Entanglement. You get entangled in situations. You get entangled with people just because there's no, there's no you're not really going anywhere. You wouldn't even expect them to go anywhere. It's just, hey, I'm in, I'm in a relationship. And I think that's an issue with relationships in our yeah. current day because people just settle. You settle for whatever, yeah. you know, and like you said, and you you really not even compatible. Um, I think compatibility yeah. is a big thing when it comes to relationships. My thing is you have to yeah. sacrifice sometimes to be single for maybe a quite some time because you're not willing to settle. If you if you if you know your worth and understand what you want, then don't settle. But a lot of times people yeah. settle. Um, and also, I wanted to talk about the affection part of you were saying about the love language. Now, there's a I'm not talking about the toxic <laughs> love language that people come up with. There's a book that calls the that's called Five Different Love Languages to understand how people operate. You know, some people don't understand what they love language is, but this book specifically tells you. Uh, different characteristics that these people have, and then out of those five different love languages, you can distinguish which one that's compatible to your partner and what's one which one is compatible to you. Now, like you said, people growing up, you you kind of trained into what you think love is, because uh, not everybody grows up in an affectionate love uh, home. Like in my household, growing up. Neither one of my parents were very, like, affectionate, touchy-touchy, I love you. It's just something that you had to know. Basically, like my dad, he was a hard worker. He went out there, he worked, he provided. He did. That was his way of showing you that I love you because he could have took off and did his own thing and, like, forget y'all. But, no, he went out there, he provided. He, he provided for his family, um, you know, 
you know, every now and then occasionally it's like a, I love you, but it wasn't like something that you say every day. And then there's those relationships or uh, households where people grow up where it's touchy-touchy every day, I love you, come sit on mommy's lap, blah, 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 and all of that stuff like that. But nevertheless, um, when, then when people grow older, they articulate that as love. So one person grows up with an affectionate, with a kissy-kissy love, and the other person just grew up like, um, you know, it's like, you better know that I love you, I'm providing, I'm doing, making sure you have a roof over your head and all that. And they not really touchy touchy types. So now you got these two different people that have to be able to try to somehow mean what they believe is love. But um, so I think it does kind of predicate on how you grow up because if you, if you don't know your loving, you you'll tend to look back on how you was raised and what that meant, what love meant then. That's how you articulate it as an adult. Not saying that it's right, but that's how you view it. And like you said, if you're in a relationship where, you know, you you grew up with the daddy or the boyfriend was beating the mama and she kept accepting it, then your nine times out of ten your child will grow up and bring that into their relationship, even though it's toxic. And, you know, sometimes it has to be a compromise as well, too. If, you know, I was listening to you when you were talking about the touchy-touchy type of Some people are very some people say, you know, say you love them a lot. Some people just, well, you know, I know, you know I love you. I'm here. I just got to know I'm here. Um, I think it's a compromise, too, in a relationship. If you know that that woman or that man that you said um, likes the affection, I think um, if you love them, really, really love them, you should be willing to compromise and get them some of that. You know, no, I don't want you touching on me all the time. You know, sometimes give that person what they need, that they what their body is crazy. Other than uh, just saying, oh, whatever the I am, you know, I'm here, so I don't know I love you. So if I wasn't here, I wouldn't love you. I, would, I wouldn't love you. I just don't say this to anybody. So you have to find a balance in life. Everything in life has a balance, you know. Uh, that's just like negative and positive. You know, everything in life has a, has a balance. So, you know, you have to. You have to find a balance in it, you know. So, you know, you're not going to get that hug all the time, but I, my man hugs you sometimes because he knows I need you at that time. Yeah, I like I like what you just said. That was good. That was good. You know, that compromise, you see what I'm saying? And, uh, that is, <laughs> that's a powerful statement because it is, you have to, un- and when you, when you look at that, like you say, oh, I may not be touch touch for all the time, but you still have to, if, if if we're together, you still have to sometimes say, let me give this person what they need. You see what I'm saying? That's compromise, you know, that's compromise, you know. Uh, uh, for uh, When me and James got together, I like to post on Facebook, you know. And first I say, you mind? This is when we were dating. Do you mind it when we decide to get in a relationship? Do you mind if I put change my relationship status to in a relationship? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. He looked at me like I was crazy, but I was in a relationship before where they didn't want anybody to know on Facebook that they, you get what I'm saying? Not they funny. wanted to be a private person. You know, they didn't, they didn't like all of that, you know? Um, they didn't want pictures of us hugging or uh, stuff like that. Um, you know, so that's I learned to ask. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And um, he likes to, he likes open this. When I say open displays of affection, James is, you know, the top. And I like open displays of affection, but I'm not over, over the top like my husband. So I compromise in that. Some people say your husband too much. I say, well, you don't worry about my husband. <laughs> you know what I'm I know that's right. Don't worry. That don't worry mom. about what he doing. You you in the wrong. You you worry <laughs> about the wrong thing. You understand me? You know, uh, because I have to. Just like he caters to me, I cater to him. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it's like we are in a relationship. I always tell people we own the ship together, you know, 
I know there's some right. people that relate on the ship together. <laughs> you know, if you look at it like that, if you are on a ship with folks you don't relate to, it's going to be some trouble, you know. So, oh, like oh, I say, yeah. we find that we find that that common ground. We don't we don't argue about my new stuff. He he likes to tell, uh, give compliments, you know. And people like yo husband be telling folks they they look good, but I'm not insecure. You see what I'm saying? I don't have that problem, you know. First, I didn't understand, but James has 150 billion friends, like like friends, you know. And some women say, "Well, ah, he got female friends. He got to get rid of them female friends." No, <laughs> you can't come and rip a person's life apart, you know. That's right. Then that just means you just that just means that that person is not your person. For you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because exactly. with me being a pastor, I pastor men and women. And I don't need him coming mm-hmm. in there while I'm trying to counsel somebody and trying to see if this, this man trying to get next to me. You get what I'm saying? I don't need that. So God put two people together that 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 uh are are that are not we don't have that issue. You know, we, we don't we're not here, but that works for me and him. It don't. Some other folk be like, "Oh, she all in my husband's face and all this," and you got a whole nother <laughs> issue going on. But see, we can't afford to do that because of 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 the callings on both of our lives. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like we have to. You have to learn each other. You really, really do. If you're gonna uh, make any type of relationship work. Yeah, again, like I said, even with uh, with friendship, you gonna make it work. Y'all gotta spend time together and find ways to uh, get to know one another. You know, boom, there that is. <laughs> All right, ladies, we down to ninety seconds. But I added some so we can all sign off. Let's start. I sign off. We'll start with uh, Miss Rita. Go ahead and sign off for us today. Well, this was an awesome topic. I thank you all for joining in with us this Wednesday morning. Um, I want to say don't settle for less. Make sure you communicate in your relationships. And until next time, we'll see you all later. All right, all come right. on, Keisha. Come on, Keisha. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for joining us. This is United for our weekly um, Wednesday show, 10 a.m. to 11. Um, don't settle and recognize recognize what's in your face. You know, it's, it's exactly what it's presenting itself as. Stay healthy. Be blessed. Until next week, we should go over some signing off. All right. All right. Come on, Tammy. Sign off. Thank you so much for everybody for listening. Uh, thank you to our co-hosts uh, for getting online with us, and, you know, bringing about these topics. There are always very, very, very good topics that anybody and everybody can possibly relate to. I love the perspective. Make sure you go on my website, www. Tammy, T-A-M-M-I-E-M, Lily, L-I-L-L-Y dot com to order my book, Why Your Refund is So Low. This is a book that pays to business owners, new business owners, so you're not making, so you're not making all the mistakes that I made to get to learn my life experiences through my book. It's on twenty dollars plus shipping and handling. Make sure you get on there and get the order in it. Tomorrow is my birthday, and so instead of you're gifting me. Why don't you gift yourself with a book to help you with your business, take your business to the next level, level solidify your business, and just overall be the best for your business. See y'all next week, Wednesday at 10 o'clock um, a.m. Central. Sean will be here as always. Thank you for listening. All right. Well, that was. This has been Sisters United. We love you, and we look forward to you joining us next week. Same bad time, same bad channel.